So let's pull out your packets. Uh, we're here in the parking lot now to start the site inventory and analysis process. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk around and everybody is going to take notes individually as we walk around the site. Your goal is to uh, capture everything that you need to know to initiate planning and design of water quality, low impact development retrofits for the parking lot and the building. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk around and observe topography, existing hydrologic patterns and features, soil and uh, native vegetation areas, access, in other words, how uh, vehicles and pedestrians flow th through the site, and then also very important utility availability and utility conflicts. So we've provided uh, everyone in section B with a topographic survey map and uh, storm drain uh, survey, uh, but you want to really uh, observe for yourself, does everything look right? The, are all the uh, structures and the, the storm drains flowing in the pattern that you expect to because you'll really want to capture that on your maps before we go back. So now what we'd like to do is uh, observe uh, site topography and, and drainage patterns at the same time because those two things really go hand to hand. So we're standing approximately at the high spot of the site, flat and sort of steps down the different rows of parking. But I want everybody to really walk around and map out the limits of these different topographic areas and the way that water is moving across the site. Ultimately, what you'll need to do is uh, provide a description of the site topography very briefly and then map out areas of flat, moderate, and steep. And as we just mentioned, this parking lot is really basically all flat, so that's what I expect that you'll find. So let's go ahead and do that. We're standing at uh, one of two outlets for the site. Um, this uh, inlet right here uh, leads to a pipe outfall into this bioinfiltration facility that's behind us. And there's one more uh, inlet just behind the curb there that leads to a second smaller bioinfiltration facility on the other side. Notice on your site map, do you see this inlet mapped on your site map? This is obviously very important. This is at the downstream end of the site. You'll note that it wasn't included on the survey. So that's one of the key things that we're trying to do with this kind of exercise is that we're trying to verify the information we have and observe everything that we need for planning and design. So everybody, please take your marker and note um, this inlet that was missing on the survey on your map. Okay, and so uh, now we see the stormwater facilities for the site. We have uh, two grass line bio infiltration facilities. The larger one to my left here that takes the majority of the parking lot runoff, and then a smaller facility over here that takes a, a smaller portion of the parking lot runoff. Of course, you've noted the drainage areas already on your map, so you should know which portion of the parking lot drains to which facility. That's going to be very important. Also note that these are flat. These are grass line bioinfiltration facilities, but they're not bioretention facilities, um, which would have a deeper mix of bioretention soil mix for water quality treatment. So you want to note you know, the, the size, the location, and the types of facilities that are existing. Also note how these facilities have been designed. You have pedestrian circulation from the parking lot through the sidewalk, bisecting these two ponds, and then providing access to a regional trail. And maintaining that access or improving that access is going to be one of our um, important points as we move forward in planning and design. So now we want to take a look at native uh, vegetation and soil protection areas and soil and subsurface hydrology characterization to help us uh, determine what's going to be feasible as far as low impact development retrofit on our parking lot site. And uh, we're over here because we want to see this bedrock outcrop here is a pretty good indication that we're going to have uh, very limited infiltration. Um, obviously, we're in very close proximity to the river, about 100 feet from the edge of our parking lot to the river. You're going to want to note that. And you're also going to want to note and delineate on your map the areas of uh, steep slope, which you see here along the river bank, which is just on the other side of your existing stormwater facilities there. Just the steep slope is just separated by this regional trail. And then your stormwater facility. So you're going to want to note that, as well as the type and the condition of the vegetation in this riparian corridor. In the design, when we looked at it, we tried to use an old technique that we've deployed and used many times, 
Looking at the original design history, understanding when it was designed, tells you a lot about what the design might have been. And then looking at the drainage patterns. We knew it was done by Lynn over here because we had the berms all the way around the outside <laughs> when he was a young architect. Then we looked at the system of where drainage might be to make sure that we picked up all the drainage patterns. And so we just followed the drainage patterns and looked at where those would be, even picking some off-site drainage outside of the basin that brought the additional uh, oh, uh, access point. And then understanding a little bit more about the site and the history of the site, we realized this was an old railroad facility and part of the design was that they brought in fill and then they had a lot of basalt and other broken up material and actually had to do some cleanup. That was on the sign over in the left corner. Then we came to the conclusion that the best thing to do to the site if the asphalt and everything was in good condition was to try to make the greatest use of the site to improve it in such a way that we might be able to get it sold by our client. And that was the site, the asphalt looked great, the trees, the shrubbery looked healthy. So we thought the one way to do is to reduce the things that we want to reduce. That is water consumption and maintenance operations. To do that, the same idea about the shrubbery, put in a drip system so you can reduce the water instead of large heads. Second, look at the larger producer and you saw it as you went out. The gentleman is mowing it with a large mower, spending a lot of time, a lot of effort. And so what we decided to do was utilize the existing facility perhaps looking at between the existing curbs and putting in some kind of a, a curb cut system just to slow down the water, bring it into each one of the catch basins, bring those catch basins to the discharge in the swell area. You notice that the swell area was not designed as properly as it should. The inlets were right at the flush with the ground, so the water just run in and drop in. Those would be modified. It would be into a low maintenance type of facility, meaning some kind of a vegetative material that you do not need to mow, watering you do not need to water except for establishment and then reduce the size put in some trees along the side to produce shade add perhaps a porous pavement for the side or the uh, uh, walkway so that you do not get any of the erosion coming off there and yet uh, you ask yourself why did they use direct connection to the river must be something wrong with the soil system and that's why we decided to keep the system intact Okay, we looked at this site and there was a number of different basins, so we analyzed our uh, pre-existing conditions. We we're trying to keep as much existing facilities in, in place as possible. Based on the impervious area and pollution generating surfaces, uh, we needed about 2,000 cubic feet of uh, capacity for treatment. The existing swale pretty much contained that. Um, this piece along the building here, um, we assume this was a catch basin based on the angle of the outflow here and so this was going to a swale so we kind of cut that out of our analysis since we weren't going to do any changes or any alterations in this area. Um, one thing we did change then to reduce the water flow throughout the area is, is change the vegetation and the irrigation system along the perimeter um, so it was uh, low flow heads instead of the big spray type heads. Um, and then in the centers we were expanding the small island areas you know, create a larger vegetation strips that would provide some treatment. We would shift the catch basins into the center of those, have them raised slightly, so we would get some infiltration quality, um, maybe have an underdrain system to collect uh, some of the water that went through there, and then use the existing storm drain system and pipe it all back down. Um, and since most of that water would be uh, clean, we could go to a smaller swale, um, change the vegetation to be uh, more friendly, environment to the, to the path, maybe put some benches or uh, other features in there to make it a little more uh, attractive along the trail there. As we learned earlier that we don't want um, bushes that people can hide behind, so we'd use a lot of thorny things in there to, <laughs> to try and discourage that. Access wise, the maintenance um, for the system is still good through the, the parking lot. Uh, this pump station that's down there would still have good access. Um, and then you have the trail to, to get into the lower section. To reduce our runoff amounts, um, we were going to change out just the parking areas with pavers, less impervious surface. Um, and so hopefully that would be uh, slow, uh, slow down some of the, the runoff that was going through there.
just like everybody else, we noticed a lot of the same observations, you know, since we're all looking at the same site. Um, so first off, we had this catch basin here and we decided to relocate that over here because it was kind of up on a higher spot. We didn't think that it was really being that well utilized there. Um, here we relocated the bike parking or the bike racks over to here and then we turned all this parking into here. We covered it with the pervious pavers, either a pervious pavement or paving stones, you know, depending on what, um, what would work better. We did the same thing on the islands here. Our idea was to catch the flow coming this way so that we could decrease the volume that would ultimately get to this swale down here. And underneath the paving stones, we would have either a sand filter or a gravel filter, something like that, that would kind of act as an infiltration basin, something like that. This is really conceptual right now. Um, here, we've, we noticed that we had two roof drains um, and that led to the trench drain, the outlet here. So at the roof drains to eliminate glaciation, especially during the winter and the colder months, we're going to put rain barrels or cisterns here. And then we'll have planters along here where it's just piped from the rain barrels over there to provide water to it. We wouldn't have to deal with pumps or anything like that. We could just use the natural head. Um, we're also going to add some more drought resistant drought resistant plants along here up on top of that retaining wall. Not only will it be aesthetically pleasing will also be uh, another place for water to drain to. Inside these parking islands, instead of having the raised, the raised landscaping ins inside of it, we'll depress it, we'll remove the wood chips, we'll remove the juniper trees, and then we'll put in drought resistant native plants. So if anybody's been to the flour mill and seen like the parking islands there, it'll be a similar landscaping type deal. So we'll do that on all of these except right here where we noticed that there was already a lot of shade and we didn't want to impact that at all. Along here, we decided not to mess with this at all because it's one of our boundaries and it's already got a lot of shade and ponderosa pines, which are great. Um, along here, since um, we'll be decreasing a lot of the outflow, what we'll do is we'll take out the grass, eliminating the water need, eliminating the maintenance and everything like that and replace it with native drought resistant plants. And then we'll also try to add in some flowers and stuff like that so it's aesthetically pleasing. So people who go for a run or a walk, it's really pretty. And then down here, we'll have an educational kiosk. So if somebody is hiding behind a tree, they can learn some stuff too. And what we'll discuss there is, you know, we'll go through a little bit of the drainage thing. So anybody, even if they're not an engineer or an architect, they'll understand, oh, okay, great. That's why we designed it this way. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. We've got some curb cuts in here, you know, to add some more water. Uh, here, most of these will depress. This was pretty steep along here, so instead of completely depress that, we'll just grade it and uh, plant it with the drought resistant, drought resistant plants. Down here, we notice that the, the catch basins, the rims are actually flush with the grass there. So to make this a little bit of a detention facility, we'd raise these rims, and then these would still act as overflow points that would then directly discharge to the river.